Hey everybody, Phil Town here from Rule One Investing. In this video, I'm sharing a bit about what's piquing my interest in the market right now. From industries that are interesting the Rule Number One team to keeping your emotions in check, that's what we're doing this week, so keep watching for more. Okay, let me start by saying that when we want to own something, We'll, we, of course, if we don't own it yet, what we're hoping is the price will go down, right? And even when we buy it, we hope the price goes down. We never buy something and hope the price goes up. We want to buy more of it as time goes along at ever better prices. And the reason we can think like that is because we have a really good idea of what this business is worth. And we know that the market, although it can be very emotional, will eventually price things where where they're worth, right? At their at their real value. So we don't have to worry that someday the market is, or at, at no time ever in the future is the market gonna actually put these things back up where they belong. So we're really excited when they go down. It's a little bit like, you know, if you love, <laughs> Melissa doesn't like this, but you know, I, I confess, I really like a Big Mac, okay? I really do. And if I know I'm gonna sneak out of the house and get a Big Mac regularly, for the rest of my life. Do I want Big Mac prices to go up or down? I'm a, I'm a Big Mac consumer, right? I want Big Mac prices down. And yet, I'm also a stock consumer. I wanna buy stocks the way I buy Big Macs. And if you think about it that way, then I should want stock prices to go down because I'm consuming them. It's really counterintuitive. Most of you want to buy a stock and have the price go up, but we just don't have that, that wonderful of a crystal ball. So what we're going to do is structure our investing tactics so that when we buy a company, we're still hoping it'll go down and go down some more and we'll buy some more and go down some more and we'll buy some more. I mean, we love doing that because it keeps our emotions in check. It keeps us working rationally. There are areas of the market that we are very interested in that are pretty obvious. And that is the technology industry, the NASDAQ, in particular, the uh, old FANG stocks, right? You got Facebook, which is now Meta, Amazon, Apple, uh, FANG, Netflix, G Google, which is now Alphabet. But you get the idea, right? So there's five very interesting companies. Throw Microsoft in, in, into the mix. There's six very interesting companies. And if those companies get sold off, those are some of the best companies in the world, okay, for starters. Second, Warren Buffett is one of the biggest owners of Apple uh, stock that there is. He's got, last check, I mean, billions of dollars of Apple stock. So there's a clue, one of the best investors in the world largest position in his portfolio is Apple stock. So if you were to watch Apple stock tumble, and if you had you know, the willingness to understand and research Apple and understand what it's worth, then that would be a really good thing to be looking at, wouldn't it? Buying in with one of the best investors in the world. Google, without a question, one of the best companies in the world. Now, they're kind of on sale a little bit, maybe, because why? They're getting attacked by the federal government. They just filed a lawsuit against them. They're going after them tooth and nail to split them up. Oh my, that could affect an investor. Europe is after them to stop uh, sending Google ads to children and be able to tell them that they're not sending them to people based on racism and based on religiousism and based on whatever the isms are. You know, they want to be able to define that they're not doing that in some way. And that's like Google's like, oh my God, we got to rewrite all these algorithms. So there's these attacks on Google that are going on. So if you're going to go out and buy one of these companies, you really have to understand it. You have to understand what's the value of this business. Where's it going to be in 10 years? If you can't do that, you can't buy those kinds of companies. All right. That said, those are not the only companies out there that are going to be on sale. We're looking at companies. Let me just put it like this. After you really study a tech company like an Apple or a, a Google or something like that, and then you go back and you look at Chipotle Mexican Grill or some really straightforward company like that, it just feels so easy. So I would say as much as possible, um, what we try to do is we try to stay away from the really hard ones 
We try to go to the really easy ones, um, really simple stuff that does one thing, you know, a trucking company that just trucks stuff, a, a restaurant that just makes burritos, you know, I mean, just simple. Just try to keep it simple. So for you, rather than taking your cues from where I'm looking right now, what you should be doing is figuring out where is your passion right now? What are you, what are you all about? You as a human being, not just you as an investor or you as somebody who wants to make money or you as somebody that wants to help your family get what they want in life, but you as a human being, as a person, what are you passionate about? What do you really feel inside is what you're all about? And if you will work on that, I mean, this sounds so touchy-feely when I say it, but if you'll work on that, you're gonna find out that investing is about figuring that out and then magnifying it. That's it, guys, for today's video. I hope you found it interesting, and if you did, there's a whole lot more where that came from. On a weekly basis, we're sharing our YouTube videos, podcast episodes, blog posts, and so much more. Head to rule1investing.com to dig in.